In this lesson we will cover two effectors that we skipped in the previous lesson. So inheritance and the volume effector. So let's first create a clone setup. I will create a torus and uh, scale it to some reasonable size, maybe like this. I'll add a cloner as a parent and uh, maybe I will go this time in Z direction like this. Maybe 10 clones and uh, 100 per value here. Also, I will add uh, this green material that I prepare just to bring some life into this guy. So now let's add an inheritance effector. Nothing will happen by itself because you have to create an object from which these uh, guys will inherit and they can inherit position, scale and rotation. So basically they can inherit transformation from other objects. So let's create something they will inherit from. So let's maybe create a null object. We will name it uh, parent. Okay, so it will be a parent of all transformations and uh, maybe we can give it this standard controller value. So just to have a visual representation viewport and uh, really place it somewhere so we can see it. Now we will drop this parent null which will drive all the transformations into our object slot in the inheritance effector. So now what happened? The guys snapped, the initial clone snapped to the position of this guy. So if you turn off position, those guys will get back to their initial position. So same goes for maybe rotation and also for scaling, but uh, you have to be in the object mode like this, otherwise it won't work. Let's get back to model mode and uh, let me show you some interesting things regarding this inheritance effector. This guy currently works in direct mode, so it means it will assume and propagate the transformations immediately as they happen with this parent guy. So if I move this, they will follow immediately. Now there is a different mode and it's a animation and you will get different results. And of course you will get a bunch of different objects. For this mode to work, you obviously have to have some sort of animation. So let's add uh, some animation to this guy and uh, really keep it simple maybe we will rotate it by a small amount so on the frame zero we will keyframe this uh, bank rotation let's go to frame uh, 30 and uh, enter 90 degrees here and we will add a keyframe so watch what happens now if we press play you will see that these guys are rotating okay, so they are following this guy but with a certain delay and uh, that all happens in this amount of time if i set this to 30 you will see the immediate rotation of these guys let me stop this because i want to explain you this a little bit more in depth so here you can define the starting and the end point of the transformation time for these guys. I really hope that makes sense. So let's actually add some time here. So let's maybe add 300. We'll do the same here and I will right click and do an expand to full time. Let's go back and press play. Now you will see that these guys are rotating and once they finish, they simply stop. If you enable this loop like this, then that behavior will loop. Okay, I think that is uh, really simple to understand. Now there is a really, really interesting option here, which is a step gap. So you will basically create a step which will take place in between each clone. So let's maybe set this to two and uh, press play and you will see the result. So they're basically, maybe I will turn off this loop so it will be easier to understand. Let's go back to, to 90 frames 
you will see the effect. So now the rotation is propagating gradually through these clones. If you change this uh, value, this end value, you're basically controlling the speed. So something like this. And this inheritance effector is absolutely great and can create spectacular results. Of course, it also offers all standard things that you can expect from the effector. And uh, you can see you can affect position, scale or rotation. So you can maybe turn off something. You have a deformation option and a good old fall off. So lots of possibilities there. So you could have fun with this and maybe add, a, say, a delay effector. And now the effect, let's set this to maybe spring and increase this to, let's say, 75. And uh, now you can create uh, really this spring emotion throughout this uh, clause. Imagine doing this by hand. This is simply a nightmare. Even if it would be possible to get decent results, uh, the sheer setup time would uh, really consume all of your time. With these effectors and a bunch of generating objects in MoGraph, uh, the possibilities are pretty much endless, so you can even play with this strength, so only partial influence will be propagated, something like this, so lots of flexibility there, I think that uh, this is one of my favorite effectors and this is not all it can do it can morph between objects so let me show you that i will get rid of this delay effector also this parent now we will put these clones in a y value let's say 50 something like this so we have a sort of a stack of clones we will copy this setup but we will use another object instead of this torus so let's say maybe uh let's go with the cone and uh, we'll scale that cone a bit something like this drop it here and uh, it's a really good idea to name these guys so we'll rename these cones i will go up the hierarchy and rename these toruses Hey, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Now let's move uh, one of these guys and uh, because I want to show you how this inheritance effector can really morph transformation values between the various cloners or other generator objects. Okay, so currently our Taurus's cloner has this inheritance effector loaded. That means that it will inherit transformations from the object loaded here. So let's set this first to direct and we will drop our cones cloner inside. So now you will see that those toruses simply snap to the position of those uh, cones. So you can clearly see this if I will play with the strength. We can make this a little bit more interesting and I will add a simple time effector to our clones. So I'll just change the value. So let's say here 90 degrees and uh, our cones will rotate. Let me go back. And currently nothing will happen unless we enable this morph motion object so you can see now that uh, those objects those toruses even though they don't have the time effector they're rotating so for example if we turn off position in inheritance only inherited value will be a rotation so I really hope uh, that makes sense and it's uh, clear enough so it's really used to transform position, scale and rotation values and also to morph between generators. I believe we can go even a step further with this. Let's in fact uh, delete all these guys except uh, one clone or maybe we will scale this and uh, we'll create two 
additional objects so we can explain this uh, better. I can create a cube. I'll move it here, maybe add, uh, let's say, a few subdivisions to it. Maybe even more. Let's go with three. And also, I will create a sphere and move it, let's say, here. This uh, generator, this cloner, can be left in the middle. I will also enable grass shading lines so we can see the wireframes. And uh, I will set this cloner to be in the object mode. So we will clone to one of these objects. So let's uh, select maybe a sphere. And uh, you'll see that these little guys, maybe we will scale it just a little bit smaller, so much more easier to see what is going on. And I will add an inheritance effector to this cones like this. And uh, for this to work, we have to have another generator. So we have to create another cloner, or maybe we could even create a matrix. Guys, right? this would be a really good example where we could use matrix just to get position, scaling, and rotation information instead of this guy. So let's get rid of this cube. So you can also use a matrix to ease up the setup so it really won't be demanding as far as the processing power goes. So now in my inheritance effector, I will drop this matrix object and uh, you will see something happening. And if I enable this morph motion object, you will see that these guys, these little cones, assumed the positions of these matrices here. I can even turn off the visibility of uh, these matrices so they are really not in the way. And I will turn on the large shading so these guys are easier to see. In the inheritance effector, with the strength slider, you are simply defining where these guys will end up. So at 100% they are at uh, one generator and at 0% they are at their original generating object. This is absolutely fantastic and things you can do with this are completely mind-blowing. So you can morph the clone constellations to anything you wish. You can use matrices, cloners, you can clone on your own objects or anything that pops to your mind. At this moment, you certainly can visualize what kind of tools MoGraph has in its arsenal and uh, how it is much more than a fancy motion graphics tool. Let me add this uh, strength slider in the viewport. So right click, add to HUD. I'll control drag it here and uh, right click and do a show always. So I really don't have to select this guy. If I want to play with the slider, it will be accessible here all the time. I will now add a second effector to this setup, and that is this uh, volume effector. So we will select our original cloner object and uh, select volume effector. Now, for this guy to work, you can see it has uh, completely the same settings uh, as other effectors. So these are pretty much common. And here, for this guy to work, you have to have a closed volume object and that must be polygon object so let's create one maybe we will go with the torus i will just rotate it and uh, maybe scale it down a bit something like this maybe even pull it here so roughly in the middle between those two guys i will convert it and uh, let's do something interesting with it so while the while this transfer is occurring, I want these clones to be affected with this volume object that we created for our volume effector. So let's drop the torus inside and uh, see what happens. And uh, pretty much nothing will happen because you have to define some parameters here. So let's maybe define the scale. Let's put one here or maybe even two, it will be easier to see. So now take a closer look. Once they hit the volume of the object, 
those guys become bigger i hope that you can see that and uh, of course it all works parametric in MoGraph, so the setups are non-destructible and uh, you can hide the volume object and you will see the effect now really clear so i'm transferring little cones from this sphere they are traveling they're becoming bigger in a certain moment and they're forming a grid cube how about that that is a, just a glimpse of what mograph can do to do this in another 3d package well you would most certainly have to be really good with programming or some scripting language or something like that so mograph gives you a power to do that without that knowledge so that is simply awesome let's now take a look at other mograph generators here under this mograph menu in our next lesson <laughs>